Would you like to know how to be completely happy all the time? Psalm 119. Blessed, happy are those who perfectly follow the laws of God. You know, it's a real challenge every day of our lives to follow God and be obedient to God. There's something within the nature of man that wants to do his own thing, have his own way, be his own boss, be in charge. I surrender all. All to Jesus. I surrender. I surrender all. There's a peace and a joy with that that the Bible calls, it passes all understanding. You, you can't describe the peace and joy that comes from being absolutely obedient. Now, there are times in your life, maybe as a new Christian, when you don't even know something you're doing is wrong, but you begin to follow the Lord and study the Word of God and say, wow, that's what the Word says? Mm-hmm. You begin to be obedient to that, and there will be a hunger that will come up inside of you, a hunger to know what the Word of God says about the issues of life. The Holy Spirit will do that for you. And it will bring you a great sense of joy and peace to follow what you read in this precious book. Verse 2. Happy are all of those who search for God and always do His will. This hunger that I'm talking about that will rise up in your heart. But you'll want to know, what does God think about this? What is the Lord's idea about this? It'll cause you to get into the Word of God and search it out. Search it out. It's what Paul was talking about when he told Timothy, study to show yourself approved of God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of God. Search. It's quite a word. Search me, O God. But in this context, it's saying, search the word of God. Find out what God thinks about the issues of life. And if God and you aren't coming out of the same place, you choose God's way or you will not be happy. Choose God's way, and it won't matter whether you're aching or in pain or your circumstances are bad. You will have a joy in your heart and a peace in your heart if you search and find God's way and do His will. You see... <clears throat> In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus had to deal with this very issue. Facing death. Right ahead of him. He could have called 10,000 angels. And he said, he prayed and he said, Father, if there's any other way. He sweat as it were great drops of blood in that garden. He said, I'm really struggling with following through. He said, if there's any other way, but then he prayed, not my will, but thine be done. No wonder Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I'm very much alive. The life which I now live, I live unto the Lord Jesus Christ. No wonder Paul said, I die daily. 
if you're going to do God's will, sometimes it will be uncomfortable. I hate to make you, I, I hate to mess your day up and tell you that. But sometimes God's will will take you out of a comfort zone. God's will is the best way for you to walk in, pursue and walk in, okay? It really is. Verse 3, rejecting compromise with evil and walk only in his path. Every day, we have choices to make. Will we compromise and do what we want or where we walk in his path and do what he wants. That word compromise. Hmm. Seems to me like there's a whole lot of compromising in the world these days. In our whole society. A whole lot of compromising and morals and, and 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 standards, if I can use that word, and everybody just kind of doing their own thing and saying, "Well, we've been set free now, so we're free to do whatever we want to do." We are free to follow God's way to make that choice with a free will, we're free to do that. That's where you need to come out at. Don't compromise. We're too close home. Don't compromise and give in to sin. Verse four, you have given us all of your laws to obey. It's not just that God didn't have nothing to do, so let's inflict a bunch of laws on these people. When God gives us direction, it's because he's trying to save us from destruction. Okay? Verse 5, Oh, how I want to follow them Consistently. Consistently. You're going to find if you're a new Christian that it's going to take a little bit of effort and a little bit of practice to get to the place where you're consistent. Especially if you've had a habit of not being consistent. Pray and ask the Holy Spirit to help you be consistent. Do it regularly, faithfully. Say, do what? Obey God. The Holy Spirit will put it into your, into your heart and into your mind. Follow God. Be consistent with it. It'll bring you joy and happiness and peace. Verse 6. Then I will not be disgraced, but I will have a clean record. A clean record. The moment you got saved, the record for your past was put in the sea of God's forgetfulness, never to be remembered against you no more. Don't don't go digging it up. Don't don't go dredging it up. It was put there to it was put there because Jesus paid the price. Expensive grace. It cost him everything. His blood, sweat, and tears. He forgave us completely. 
clean record. You say, well, it seems like I mess up every day. There's probably areas every day where you could have done better. That's why in 1 John 1 and 9, he's made provision for us to bow before God in humility and say, I'm sorry, I repent. Cleanse me. Verse 7, it's important that we tie this in here because so far we've, um, you know, it's a pretty straight line here about uh, don't compromise, be consistent, choose to follow God's laws, and then you'll have a clean record. But verse 7 hits on something that'll make you squirm. After you have corrected me, I will thank you by living as I should. Most people don't like to be corrected. As I said earlier, having your own way. But when you're wrong, you're wrong. And if God sees you being wrong and corrects you, you're a blessed man. You're a blessed woman. Search me, O oh God. Know my heart. If there's any evil way in there, take it out. Deal with it. Correct me. I honestly mean that with all my heart. Correct me. Well, that's a good little sermon. If you're looking for a sermon to preach, go to Psalm 119. I got something written at the bottom of my Bible here that just grabbed my attention. I know it's my handwriting. I don't know where it came from, but I'd like to read it to you. You can complain because roses have thorns, or you can rejoice because thorns have roses. Have a good day. God bless.